All right, it's quiz time and I've got a question for you. What's the number one cause of vision loss and blindness amongst working age adults? Need a hint? You guessed it, it's diabetes. And in this video, we're gonna be touching on how diabetes affects the eyes and what a diabetic eye exam looks like from your doctor's perspective. So let's take a look. Hey guys, this is Dr. Joe Allen from Dr. Eye Health bringing you the very best in tips and education about your eyes and your vision. And here on this channel, you're gonna find a lot of different vision product reviews as well as educational videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And at any point throughout the video, make sure to check out the show notes and links below for additional information about anything that we mentioned today. Otherwise, let's get into diabetes. All right, so in case you didn't know, diabetes is a major issue in healthcare across the entire world. I think the World Health Organization quotes just shy of 500 million people diagnosed with diabetes. Now, diabetes is a very complex discussion and health issue. Uh, ultimately, the reason we wanted to make this video is just to kind of educate people how diabetes can affect the eyes, because it is one of the major causes of vision loss and blindness in the world. All my day in the clinic, basically I'm seeing all sorts of different people with different eye issues. Sometimes all they need is glasses or contacts, but a lot of the times it's for different health conditions like diabetes. And a lot of the patients who have diabetes, either, either they're maybe don't know that they need to have an eye exam, which they should, and if they don't know that they need an eye exam, they don't know what for. They think that maybe it's just to check on their vision, but no, there's a lot more going on with the eyes in terms of diabetes. So in this video, you should start to get a better appreciation for what exactly your doctor's gonna be looking for, how the, how the different changes within the eye can possibly affect you and your eye health, and what those different changes may implicate in terms of your overall bodily health and well-being. Just to start, let's quick review what are the different types of diabetes and what diabetes is. Diabetes in general is the body's inability to utilize sugar and getting that from your blood into your tissues correctly. Now, there's generally a couple of different types of diabetes, but in most part, there's two diabetes that people identify with. There's type one diabetes, and that's where your body's pancreas can't produce insulin, and then type two diabetes, and that's where people's body doesn't respond to insulin. Now, again, the causes of diabetes is pretty complex and out of the scope of this video. However, make sure that if you are diabetic and you're not sure if you're type one or type two, that you're talking with your doctor and you understand more of what's going on. Now, depending if you're type one or type two, the eyes are gonna be affected largely the same but it largely does depend on how long you have been diabetic and how well you're controlling your blood sugars. Now, the biggest issue with diabetes as a whole is that when you're diabetic, your blood vessels throughout your entire body get damaged. And that's one of the first things that I learned from my physiology professor when I was in school was that you're only as old as your blood vessels are. And in diabetes, your blood vessels can get damaged over time. And that happens not just in your eyes, but your kidneys and even possibly the brain. So just to help you get a better bearing of what's going on with the eye and what part of the eyes are affected with diabetes, I do have a little model eye right over here. This model eye I'll hold up and try to show you just kind of what the major structures of the eye are. So again, you have a better understanding of what's going on. The front surface of the eye, that's called the cornea. That's the clear window to the eye, lets the light through. Behind the cornea, we have the colored part of the eye. That's called the iris, and that's gonna be your brown eye, kind of like on this eye here. Otherwise, you have blue eyes, green eyes, you know, you got your yellow eyes, your gray eyes. Behind the iris actually is a crystalline lens, and this lens is perfectly clear when we're born. Uh, but behind this lens is actually this whole empty space. Right here we have the ciliary body, that's the muscle that pulls on the lens that lets you focus up close. And then this empty space, and I know in the model it's empty, but in reality it's filled with a gel called the vitreous humor. And behind that vitreous gel, kind of this orange wrap around the back of the eye, and that's called the retina. And that's arguably one of the most important parts of the entire eye. It was where it recepts all of the light signals and then it sends that light signal down the optic nerve in the back here, back to your brain, and that's what lets you see. 
And the issue with diabetes is that these blood vessels get weakened over time and get damaged. And damaged blood vessels means bad news. Now, if you're having your eye exam and your doctor says that they're noticing changes to your blood vessels, that means they're now gonna diagnose you with something called diabetic retinopathy. And there's four stages of diabetic retinopathy. The first stage is called mild non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And that's just the very early stages of having these changes to your blood vessels. And then you have the second stage, which is called moderate non-proliferative. Third is severe. And then the final stage, the fourth stage is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy and that term proliferative just means that new abnormal blood vessels are growing in the very back of the eye and those abnormal blood vessels not only leak fluid but can cause major problems with scarring and even lead to a retinal detachment now, if a person is just starting to develop diabetic retinopathy, the very first stage, again, mild, non-proliferative, meaning there's no abnormal blood vessels yet, the blood vessels are starting to develop what are called microaneurysms. And these appear as almost these little balloon-like shapes to uh, the structures of your blood vessels within the eye. And we can cut over to some photos here and I can kind of show you, do you see the red big blood vessels here? That kind of looks like a road map. Those are normal blood vessels. However, if you look at these small little red spots, those are what we call microaneurysms. And so in the first early stages, your doctor may notice one or two, all the way up to maybe even like 20 some in a single quadrant, one fourth of the retina in the back of the eye. And they're gonna start calling that mild diabetic non-proliferative retinopathy. Now, of course, a diagnosis of mild non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy isn't the most severe, of course, but it does tell your doctor more about of course, the status of your eye, your diabetes, how well your blood sugars may be controlled, or how long you've been diabetic and your risk of other complications. However, if you start to advance to a moderate stage of diabetic retinopathy, where not only just the microaneurysms, but now you start getting larger hemorrhages within the back of the eye. Perhaps you'll even go on to having what are called cotton wool spots, which actually are parts of the eye that have blood vessels have basically broken and the part of the eye, the retina that's being starved and not getting the amount of oxygen and nutrients from the blood it needs actually starts to become ischemic. They're not, it's not getting blood flow, it's not getting the nutrients and it actually appears white, kind of like little cotton balls stuck in the back of the retina. And we can actually cut over again to another photo here. And in this photo again, you'll actually see not only the regular blood vessels, you'll see the little spots, the microaneurysms, you'll see some of these larger bloodshot hemorrhages in the back and then again we have another cotton wool spot that's that fluffy white spot way down here this person is likely going to be diagnosed with some level of moderate non-proliferative retinopathy now at a moderate stage we're going to be more concerned again not just as an eye doctor but even your primary care doctor an endocrinologist because that's gonna be a higher risk of developing, again, that more severe stage, the proliferative where abnormal blood vessels begin to grow. That patient with moderate changes is really in need of better control over their blood sugars. Now, once someone develops the more severe stage of retinopathy, we start noticing bigger changes within the anatomy of the back of the eye. And within the retina, we'll actually start to not just see those microaneurysms, those large hemorrhages or cotton wool spots, but the veins actually start to change themselves and they look almost lumpy, almost like somebody took a ring of sausages and spun them all together. Beyond that, they're also noticed new, very tiny, irregular blood vessels beginning to grow. And that actually could be the beginning of what's called the proliferative or neovascular diabetic changes, where again, these new abnormal blood vessels start to grow and they put at risk of not just bleeding, but potentially scarring and again, more severe risks for vision loss. Now again, we'll cut over to another photo and I'll kind of show you what that looks like to your doctor when they're examining your eye. Now, this photo here, you might be able to see certainly a lot more blood spots in the back of the eye, some of that deeper red. You, I don't really see too much of what's going on here with in terms of vetus beating. The veins do look a little distorted, but it's not incredibly bad. There are, however, some irregular blood vessels growing off to the side here. 
Now, finally, the proliferative stage. The proliferative stage, again, I've said it a couple times now, new blood vessels forming in the back of the eye. But with those new blood vessels, the big issue is that they're kind of like a leaky garden hose. They just leak a lot of blood, and with that blood comes other fibrovascular kind of tissues and cells. And that actually causes scar tissue, and potentially, when that scar tissue dries out, it starts to pull on the retina and can pull the sides of the retina off the back of the eye, and we call that a retinal detachment. Same thing with those bleeding blood vessels. They're very weak and they can leak blood into the vitreous into the eye. And that means we have a vitreous hemorrhage. And then with all these different scenarios, not only can you have vision loss, just now we're not talking about just like blurred vision. Oh, well, I can get glasses, it'll be better. No, we're talking about permanent vision loss. People go blind from this condition. So one of the more frustrating things about diabetes and the eye is that a lot of patients neglect to come in and get their eyes checked, even though their primary care doctor and endocrinologist are likely telling them to. And they don't come in because they feel like their vision is fine, that they can see okay, even without their glasses, or maybe even with their glasses, and, and they feel like, oh yeah, that means I don't have any problems with my diabetes, and that's not true. Unfortunately, in any stage of diabetic retinopathy, you can actually start to develop what's called diabetic macular edema. And that basically describes where the blood vessels in the back of the eye actually break open, they leak fluid and blood and its fatty contents into this most critical part of the retina in the back of the eye. Again, that's called the macula. And then the macula begins to swell, kind of like a blister. And when that happens, not only will your vision start to be distorted and blurry, but that means that your vision could actually be permanently altered that way. If the fluid accumulation and swelling in the back of the eye becomes very significant and it's not caught or treated correctly, the anatomy and really architecture of the retinal cells can be permanently damaged. And then there's really no way to get the vision 100% back to what it once was. Now beyond just retinopathy in the back of the eye, your doctor may even notice that new blood vessels are starting to grow on the iris, the colored part of the eye. That was typically happens later on in the disease and very indicative that, hey, they, this patient has proliferative diabetic retinopathy and very uncontrolled blood sugars, but something else that your doctor may mention, and they may even do what's called gonioscopy, where they put a special type of contact lens on your eye, and then they are able to better look at how those new blood vessels are growing onto the iris. Now beyond this, those blood vessel changes with diabetes, the eye's actually at higher risk of both cataracts and glaucoma. Cataracts is a condition where, again, the lens inside the eye starts to cloud over, becoming harder to see, even with glasses. And then the other thing, glaucoma, that's where the nerve in the back of the eye starts to die over time. Now, that gets pretty complicated. There's a lot of different types of glaucoma. We'll cover that in another video in the future. Now, the other thing for some people, if their blood sugars are way out of control and chronically elevated, their blood sugars can actually cause the lens inside the eye to swell. And with that swelling, it's gonna cause a person's prescription to change dramatically. They typically become more hyperopic or farsighted. Now, when a person becomes suddenly more farsighted, uh, depending on the person's original prescription, they may either see their vision turn really blurry or it could actually get a little better if they were nearsighted at first. But any sort of major change in your vision, you should be talking to your doctor, at least asking kind of, hey, what's going on? I'm seeing these changes. Your eye doctor may pick that up as a red flag that, hey, you could be diabetic. And they'll usually go ahead and order blood work to figure out if you are diabetic, or they may refer to another doctor, your primary care doctor, or again, maybe an endocrinologist, just to run some blood work check, and checks to see if, hey, yeah, if, you're, if you might be diabetic, and then they can better manage you themselves. Again, diabetes, you have all these different things that can be affected. And that's why so many doctors strongly recommend that you have your eyes dilated with the dilating eye drops at every time you have your eyes examined. The dilating drops are gonna cause the pupil, the black part of the eye, to get really big. And when they get really big, that's gonna allow your doctor to get a better view of exactly what's going on. We get kind of a high definition image of what's changing in the back of the eye. And that's the only way for us to accurately, again, recognize the disease that's starting, identify what's going on, how to treat it, and then get you seen as often as we need to to make sure you don't advance to those more severe stages.
So now that we've gone over all the different ways that diabetes can affect the eyes, let's go over how it's treated. Now, for the most part, People just, we, we basically do watchful waiting. We kind of monitor what's going on with the diabetes and how the retinopathy is developing. And we relay that information to again, you're either a primary care doctor or your endocrinologist, whoever's managing your condition. And we speak to them about what stage you're at and what kind of changes are going on inside the eye. And that information is very helpful for your doctors because they know that if you're having bleeding changes within the eye, then those same bleeding changes are affecting your kidneys, possibly your brain and your nerves nerves throughout your entire body. However, if you do start to get to more of those advanced stages, either more into the severe or proliferative stage, or perhaps you're developing the macular edema, your doctor's gonna talk about different options of treatment, and that's generally gonna include either an injection of a medication into the back of the eye, or using a laser in the back of the eye, or maybe both. Now the injection of the back of the eye, I think anybody thinking about a needle going toward the eye is not something they want, but typically in that scenario, they do an injection of a certain type of protein uh, called anti-VEGF or anti-vasoendothelial growth factor. And that vasoendothelial growth factor is again a growth factor that gets released into the eye whenever there's bleeding in the back. And that happens again in the proliferative stage or in any sort of macular edema. And so by injecting this anti-growth factor, basically the medication causes the swelling to shrink and it causes the new blood vessels to kind of recede and heal up. Additionally, in some stages, they'll use that laser in the back of the eye, and that'll either kind of burn away the part of the eye that is not really needed at that point, it kind of discourages new blood vessel growth, and it can help, again, seal up those leaking blood vessels from causing the swelling in the back of the eye. Now, the follow-up or number of visits for diabetes is gonna be different for everybody and depends on what stage of diabetes you have. Now, if you're diabetic and your doctor says there's no diabetic changes, they're probably gonna to see you back at least every year and that's something that everyone should have is at least at least one diabetic uh, dilated eye exam every single year now again if you start to have either the mild changes uh, then the doctor of course it's up to the doctor they're gonna decide what's best for you and your health uh, but it's gonna generally be between anywhere in maybe six months maybe closer to nine months or maybe 12 months maybe just a year if you have your blood sugars under control then if you go to the more moderate stage, that's gonna get closer maybe four months, maybe six months. And then if you're going closer to the severe stage, that's probably gonna be every three to four months. Uh, if you are more in a proliferative stage, you're probably gonna be, have to be evaluated by a retinal specialist to get those treatments. And they'll of course tell you when they need to see it back, whether it's six weeks, two months, three months. And as things heal up, they typically push things out further and further. Now one very important thing I wanted to talk about and and that is the findings of the Diabetic Control and Complications Trial. That was a major study, a lot of patients, mostly type 1 diabetic, but they found that those patients who took insulin as instructed and kept the most optimal control over their blood sugars, they ate well, they stayed active, again, they checked their blood sugars regularly, those patients had less, not just on, uh, early, like a later onset to development of diabetes, but their overall development of complications, retinopathy, disease was much lower. So that basically just confirms that, hey, the better you take care of yourself, the less chances you have not just developing retinopathy or disease of the eye, but diabetic changes to your kidneys, as well as the nerves throughout your body. So to wrap it up, I really just hope that everyone here gets the idea that how important an eye exam is for not just everybody, but particularly for diabetics. There's a lot of different things that could be going on. Trust your eye doctor. They went to school for a long time to study this, and they're gonna tell you exactly what's going on when you need to be seen. Now again, the whole point of this video wasn't to scare anybody, but really just to educate and empower everyone to take better control of themselves and to help encourage their family members, anybody who, again, yourself, or maybe someone else in your family who may be diabetic, to again, just take control over their health and make better healthy eye choices. So if you learned something here from this video today, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, share it with friends and family, anybody who may actually benefit from learning more about how diabetes can affect the eyes. 
Otherwise, again, this is Dr. Joe Allen here from Dr. Eye Health, bringing you the very best in tips and education about your eyes and your vision. Keep an eye on it. We'll talk to you soon.